we skipped two World Cup races, we didn't go to Europe, we lost the money from, you know, in our pockets for World Cup points, we lost ranking, yet we found a way to make that into a good thing and we went and won our World Championships because we stayed at home during that time that we would have been in Europe. We stayed at home on Lake Placid, learned the track better, and then when the race came around, we won. And for me, for the first time in a decade, I actually saw us <laughs> make a plan, you know, execute it, and then actually have it pay off. And it was so fulfilling to see that happen. And then the funding now has come. You know, now they believe in us. Now we believe in ourselves more. And hopefully, hopefully you know, we can not let ourselves down as we head towards the games. I've been with a few different drivers in my bobsled career, and Steve Holcomb's the best, the best driver I've ever been behind. And it's, it is, it's, it's, putting your, it's putting your life in somebody else's hands uh, for you know, 60 seconds at a time or 50 seconds at a time going 95 miles an hour in something that doesn't have brakes and something that doesn't have airbags and something that you know, doesn't have seatbelts. So it's, it is, it's a leap of faith until you understand how good he is at what he does. And at that point, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a privilege and it's an honor to, to get to, to be on the same team. A good driver is well, someone who's a leader, first and foremost. And in our sport, someone who can, you know, someone who can take down the bobsled and take it, make it essentially go the fastest. Uh, so, you know, we spend a lot of time together too. So you need that team cohesion. We have to. There has to be some camaraderie, and and Holcomb does a good job of, you know, he lets us know when we messed up. We let him know, kind of when he messes up briefly if he yeah. messes up. I don't really. I don't say too much because oh, I haven't been in the sport too long. But uh, what makes a good driver is 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 he has to be a leader and he has to be able to to accept the fact that you know maybe he messed up but he's got three guys behind him and he is in control so he needs to have that mental toughness he needs to be confident in his abilities because not only is he driving down something that could potentially flip over uh, just himself he's got you know he's got his team back there too so I think you have to be mentally tough and they push every day so you know we might practice one day and we race but he, put, he practices, he pushes every day, pushes at every race. So you need to also, you know, you need that longevity to, to stay healthy during the season. Loading into a bobsled is, is, one, of, is one of the you know, most difficult things in sport. Anybody who's ever taken a bobsled ride or come and taken a tourist ride, it takes us three or four minutes to get everybody in and situated in the right spot. And when you watch us on television, it takes us a second and a half once we get off the ice to get in the sled and get to where we want to be. Uh, it's there's it's so, so much of a team aspect at that point where you have to know what the guy in front of you and what the guy behind you somehow is doing and you have to know you know when Justin loads before before myself if there's any hiccups or if there's any issues like that I have to be able to read exactly what his body's doing and if he's moving one way I have to know what I have to do to get in at the same time and no load is exactly the same uh, no load is absolutely perfect and load being the the technical term for as we get into the sled uh, after we're done pushing to get in to go down the bottom of the hill. So we're always, we always get down to the bottom and we always analyze whether it's a third, third heat out of four at the Olympic Games, we're still going to be analyzing what we did with one more heat to go. And probably after the end of the fourth heat, we're still going to talk about what just happened, whether we win, lose, or draw. And it's a, continual, it's a continual thing of trying to get better and better and better all the time. My career was kind of going, go, wasn't going where I wanted and I was injured and I was trying to find something else to be good at. Uh, I wasn't ready to be done being an athlete and be done being in the spotlight. And somebody at some point along the line said bobsled and I, so I had gotten a hold of the, the Olympic committee and within a year I was at my first camp and within a year and a half I was on my first Olympic team. Um, and it was more, at the time, it was more finding, finding that thing that I could succeed at. Uh, and that's, that's really what it came down to at first. And then I really grew to appreciate the sport and appreciate what I was doing. Um, and it, you know, it grows from there. And you're, you know, as an, it, as an Olympic athlete, as a bobsledder, you need the same tools outside. You know, there's the adrenaline, there's those kind of fear factor kind of things. But at the same time, you still need the same drive and the same dedication and the same day in and day out grind, understanding that your goal is four years away. And what you do today does actually make a difference and what you do tomorrow will make a difference and you just try to get better and better each day as you go from there. I didn't finish college and was, I was just done with football. I was at a point in, in my life where I wasn't doing anything. And so I was looking for something to do. I was looking for a way to get back into competitive sports. 
And just so happened, my mom heard on the radio about a Bobso tryout, and boom, here I was. So a uh, year and a half, two years later, here I am sitting before you. Uh, have not gone to the Olympics yet, but hoping to go this year. And I uh, had a good show on at World Championships. So uh, I got in the sport because of the radio, and now I'm in love. I think it's great. You go through, you get in the sled, and, and it, you push, or, you, or it runs off, and the sled starts out nice and slow and, and even, and you go through some easier curves, and all of a sudden you, you hit usually, you know, in, in Whistler at the Olympic track, it's actually curve one or curve two, and, you know, most other tracks it's curve three or curve four, where it's as if somebody, you know, lit a stick of dynamite in the back of the sled, lit it, and exploded it right about there, and at that point, you're certain something has gone terribly, terribly wrong. And this can't possibly be right. This can't possibly be what's going to happen. And the dri there's no way that the driver that's in front of you that's pulling on these ropes to control the front runners actually can be controlling the sled at this time. And after that, once you start hitting you know, more speeds and you get up to 70, 80, 90 plus miles an hour and you go through four or five Gs, it's as if it's fun, it's exhilarating, but at the same time when you're bent over as a push athlete, it's as if somebody's put a grand piano on your back and there's a monkey jumping up and down. Because that's what it feels like as you go through five G's and, the, and the, the ice is not smooth, it's not a road, it's more like a gravel, more like a gravel road is what it feels like at that point. So it's very, a lot of vibrations and it's very loud, uh, just as if you were driving down a country road. And you, know, you come to the finish and your guts kind of hurt. And yet at the same time, I remember my first time down the hill, everything kind of hurt. At the same time, my head was a little bit woozy and yeah, I thought like, that was pretty cool, maybe I want to do that again. And then you do it, you do it, you do it, and you get more and more. And by the time you're done, it's by the time you've been doing it for nine years like myself, it's, it's just like a Sunday drive. First, you have to kind of be drawn towards the adrenaline sports to, to, to like what we do. Um, secondly, you, as a, as a push athlete, we have to have total confidence in our driver because, like I said, you don't do, you don't do anything. You, you just hold on. So you need that. You need to be able to trust someone who, who puts your life in their hands and your safety. So. You need that and mental toughness. You definitely need that because when it's cold, uh, someone once said, they said, when it's cold up there and it's raining and mommy's not holding your hand, you know, do you really want to be here? That's, that's what you have to ask yourself. So, you know, if you really want to do it, you'll show up day in and day out. And if not, then you can go home.